Assalamualaikum uh, everyone. Waalaikumsalam. Okay. Okay. Waalaikumsalam, Prof. Okay. Faiza ke tu? Ya, yeah, saya. Sekejap, eh. Okay. Okay, okay I think uh, now uh, the time is 10.30, so we should start lah. Okay? Okay. 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 Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, good morning to everyone. So, today we have a session uh, uh, sharing from uh, IR, Dr. Abdul Aziz bin Abdul Rahman, Raham, and this program is organized by Staff Potential Development Committee (FKE). Uh, and then today we have a sharing talk from uh, Professor IR, entitled "Strategy to Attend PE Status for Academia." So before we start, so let me share uh, his uh, biodata or biography. In his talk, Professor I. Dr. Abdul Aziz bin Abdul Rahman will be sharing various options available for academics to obtain the DIA professional engineer status. The outcome-based professional assessment that was introduced by BEM recently will be also covered in the talk. Strategy that can be used to obtain sufficient practical uh, experience will be explained. And Prof. Aziz will be also be detailing the step involved in the operation application process. Specific question related to question uh, professional engineer applicable will be addressed during the Q and answer session as well. Okay, now uh, this is the the Professor IR uh, biograph, uh, biodata. Professor Abdul Aziz Abdurrahman is currently attached with Chemical Engineering Department, University of Engineering, Faculty of Engineering, University of Malaya. Various Position held by him include Deputy Vice Chancellor Student Affairs, Deputy Saint Chancellor Development, Deputy Saint Chancellor Value Creation and Inter uh, Enterprise, and Dean of Faculty of Engineering. His main re research area are mixing in steering results, green technology, and advanced water treatment. He has graduated more than 100 PhD and master student and has published about 300 papers in high impact journal and conference proceeding. There are 14 uh, patents registered under his name as well. His achievement is in research activity has resulted in him being recognized as one of the high cited researcher in 2020, 2021, and recently in 2022 by Kerry Red. He is fellow of Academy Science Malaysia, Institute of Chemical Engineer UK, and Institute of Engineering Malaysia. Professor Abdul Aziz is also a practical chemical engineer, especially in the field environmental sustainability. So now without delay, so we invite Professor IR uh, Abdul Aziz to share his talk. Okay. okay. Uh, Assalamualaikum and uh, very good morning, everyone. Uh, Waalaikumsalam, Prof. Just, just call me uh, Aziz, it's okay. <laughs> okay, so uh, today probably we'll spend about um, mungkin dalam satu setengah jam macam uh, itulah. Eh. Okay. So uh, I have two slides. Uh, uh, so you can stop me anytime uh, uh, if you see anything that yang you nampak tak faham from a slide or whatever, you can, you can stop. And uh, probably in the middle, uh, after 45 minutes, we can take a five minutes break. Ask me any questions uh, because uh, sometimes when you see the slide, uh, the question comes, uh, you better ask. Okay, so today let's do a sort of an informal session uh, today. I hope no more banji in the card. Banji sudah settle lah, sikit sikit, bro. Then uh, let me wish uh, uh, Ramadan Karim to everyone. Uh, okay, so tonight we'll be starting our our prayers and all that. So yes, I think yes. it's a very good day to have this uh, majlis ilmu lah I'll consider that. Eh? Inshallah, okay. Prof. Inshallah. Okay. Let me uh, share my slide, the first, uh, first slide. Um, okay. Okay, we can see your slide, Prof. Uh, slide ke... Uh, can you see my slide or my screen? I can see I can see your screen, Prof. 
Yeah. It's not slide, right? This is a yeah, yeah. email, right? Email, email. Ah, I'm, I'm going there. Um, slides. Uh, email, slide? Oh, my screen. Email, email. I can see. I can see a screen from. Okay. Can you see now my slides? Put them again. No, no, not yet. Oh yeah, okay, okay. Let me see. Okay. 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 Kita ready, ready, ready. Lepas tu bila ni? Okay, okay. Save screen. Which screen is this? Uh, whiteboard. Phone. Finder. Share screen. Wait on. Boleh kan? Sekarang? Ah, uh, now I can see your ah uh, your screen, not slide. Yeah. Ini the website for ah uh, internet. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, wait. Uh, Simples. Okay, share screen. I have to choose the right screen. Eh? Now, then, um, okay, I, I think you can see now, right? Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, bro. Okay, more well, zoom cara di lain sikit. Eh? <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. So, uh, probably you can you can see this clear. Everyone can see this uh, screen? Clear, girl? Yes, yes, I can see. Okay, all right. Okay, uh, can you can you see fully or uh, you can see uh, half? I can see fully your slide. You can see fully, yeah. Okay, others? Okay, and show. Okay, all right. Uh, today, uh, our, our talk will be. Uh, the title will be strategies to obtain uh, to attain professional engineer status for academia. Okay, I'm I'm Aziz. Currently, uh, I'm uh, at the University of Malaya taking sabbatical leave. Okay, so uh, uh, I was the TNC before this. Tapi saya telah memendekkan my my tenure as a TNC uh, to take uh, sabbatical leave. Uh, lama sangat lah nak 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 so I'm uh, back to the department uh, chemical engineering. Uh, rightly, uh, right now I'm also a, a committee member of ENQ, uh, ENQ BN. Uh, di mana ENQ ni adalah yang yang bertanggungjawab terhadap uh, meluluskan IR proses RU A, RU B, RU C dan sebagainya lah. The main one, sir. Okay. Okay. Right now I just want to give. Uh, boleh boleh nampak aja lah. Saya kalau tak jelas lah begitu. Okay. Sekarang ini. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just to uh, just to uh, see your see some idea. Right now, uh, the number of PEs in uh, Malaysia is uh, ten thousand plus. Number of PPC at that time lah. Sekarang ni dah bertambah, mungkin dah bertambah. Mm -hmm. Now there is also accredited checkers. Okay, ini adalah untuk cyber lah, maybe yeah. Graduate engineers ni, uh, student kita, uh, the graduate final year. And uh, the new act also introduced engineering technologies. Ini teknologi lain daripada MQA. This is engineering technologies. We also have inspector of work, basically technicians. Now, yang bawah ni, consultancy practices ni, kebanyakannya uh, kita punya lecturers tak tak, tak berminat. Uh, yeah. So, uh, under engineering act, we can also uh, register consultancy companies. Okay, partnership, sole uh, proprietorship pun boleh. Uh, multidisciplinary boleh dan sebagainya. So this is something that uh, uh, academics don't take up unless you are in an, uh, like myself, um, macam I'm a director of one of our consultancy unit. Kita ada body corporate satu, okay? Mm -hmm. 
But to do that, you need uh, what qualification. So I'm also going to cover because it's not just about getting IR for your accreditation, but as an additional uh, professional qualification for future as well. So itu yang kita akan cover today. Eh? Mm -hmm. Now, what this slide shows is that our numbers as a developing country, and if we want to be developed country, these numbers are not sufficient. Yeah, numbers are not sufficient. That's why many countries, many investment, direct investment and indirect investment, they look at these numbers. Numbers dia masih kurang lagi. See, we are sitting in an economic area, 1,500 radius, kalau kita tengok China, India. So the position is very good. But our human resource in terms of engineering uh, capacity still is low, okay, per, uh, per unit population. So we still need more uh, numbers, okay? Now, now I also want to take, uh, there is some confusion uh, among people, the differences between uh, this, this, these items. Now, Board of Engineers is a statutory body, okay? This is constituted under Act of Parliament, uh, REA, Registration of Engineers Act 1967. Now, if you want to practice here as an engineer, registration is mandatory. So we are providing uh, engineering services. Teaching is actually uh, providing engineering services. Jadi, registration is mandatory. Yeah? Mm -hmm. At least as a GE, graduate engineer is mandatory. Now, if you don't register and do, technically, they can come after you somehow, but normally we don't do that. I have not done that yet, okay? But if you get into trouble uh, while you're doing your job, and if you are not registered, you can get into trouble. You're not protected by the act. So the act will, will compile you to do certain things, but at the same time, the act also provide protection for us. There'll be liability protection and all that, yeah? Jadi registration, so Board of Engineers mandatory. That's why when we, I'm also a associate director dulu for EAC. So when we go, kita, kita minta, are you registered or not? Okay, similar like uh, other medical profession. Now, IEM is actually, is a learned body. And they are not regulatory, they are under register of society. Kadang-kadang orang tak faham. Yeah? So what they do is, they sit together, Hey, let's come together and we decide what we want to do for the profession. Uh, can we have some workshop? Can we have some program so that we continuously improve ourselves? Information, ideas, and government also go to them for ideas and all that. Now, the registration is voluntary in IEM. However, 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 IEM has got a very special uh, position in our act because IEM is one of those yang telah uh, membentuk, uh, membantu, membentuk BM. That's why if you are a corporate member of IEM, you can actually have some leeway in getting your IR. Similarly, now we have also MySET. MySET, similar status like Institute of uh, Engineers Malaysia, where people sit together. And they say that, okay, let's do something among ourselves. Let's have training program. Let's, let's see what we can do. So it's a learning society. And the registration is voluntary. However, because of the special privilege we can see later, you can actually have a group C where you can actually, if you are a member of IEM, corporate member of IEM, you can actually get your IR if you meet certain other requirements. So that's the situation. A board of technology is also a statutory body. Okay, recently uh, it's also by the act of uh, four technologies and technicians. Now, engineering technician is different. Okay. Engineering tech technician, engineering technology is different. That yeah. comes under REA. These technologies and technicians is, is different and they have their own uh, things that you can do and registration is still voluntary. For us as engineers, I'm talking about for us as engineers, for your accreditation of your program. Yeah. 
Now, we also have other uh, institutions, international, like ICAMI, IMECI, ICE, IET, IMASEL, and so on, where the registration is voluntary. Mm -hmm. However, however, because there is a globalization development, sometimes we do mutual recognition. The board do mutual recognition. We recognize professional. Because of that, if you have this membership, you can see later, that's why the group B comes in. So the board recognizes some of these engineering institutions. Tapi registration, as far as we are concerned, is voluntary. Okay? Now, um, based on this, so we must understand this. Uh, yeah, understand this. This, this is the basic. Because sometimes, when the report student kita pun tak paham. Sometimes, oh, we ask them, hey, are you registered with the board? Hey, say that I'm not registered in IEM. Different. Okay, different. So that's why Stara many universities, including UTHN, uh, we, we made this program dulu, where automatic registration, and your graduates, they grow automatic registration. Ada dah kan? Uh, the UTHN dah ada kan dengan contract dengan, apa contract, like MOU, MOA dengan board kan? Bila student keluar, you register automatically kan? Uh, sudah. Sudah. So, so, semua dah ada dah sekarang, because I was championing that dulu. Uh, we started, uh, I think UTM started first, then UM, and then majority of the universities started with us. Okay? Mm -hmm. right. Now, the question asks, Shabi, I can see that uh, kita punya, uh, uh, Dr. Faiza pun ada juga PS, kan? Shabi, no, it's okay. It's, it's your choice. Okay, sometimes uh, all this is actually a recognition. It's your choice. It tells a story. But as far as board is concerned, we recognize IR. As far as your engineering program is concerned, we, rec we recognize IR. So if you ask me which one is which, you can go for both. But as far as accreditation and all that concern is IR. And, and the engineering act by being at IR in PE, PEPC, it gives you certain privileges. Uh, it limits uh, certain things what others can do. Similarly, you got uh, TS, okay? So we are not going to discuss which is better, which is not better, they are different, okay? But as far as accreditation is concerned, we go for IR, I think that's it. So far, the soalan ke daripada siapa-siapa? Okay, kalau tak ada soalan. Clear, um, Prof. Huh? So far, clear. Yeah, okay. Now, we amended the act. See, this is an old act. You, you don't amend act, you don't change act, but you amend act, okay? So it was uh, done in uh, 1967, as you can see from this diagram. Uh, then we change more amendments, this, that. Amendments will take place because you can do amendments as things require. So now in 2015, we made amendments. I was involved in the amendment, uh, Arwa, Atau Murad uh, was there. So we did this big, big item. Why we did this? Um, we felt that certain things are needed. For example, it was a very uh, protect, uh, protected against uh, non-citizens. So before 2015, non-citizens cannot become a professional engineer. But because when we went into international trade organization, when we became member of Washington Echo, as bagainya, we liberalized. Liberalized means we allow engineers from outside to come into our country and practice, and they can become PE and GE and become BEPC. Likewise, the other countries will do the same thing. Okay, this is a globalization. So it's good because we can go out. That's why we can see later now, there is a regional development taking place. And also to regulate certain things, because at that point, Engineering, um, some of, some items are not really regulated, not comprehensive. And we sign Washington Accord, Dublin Accord, some, many Accords. We sign all Accords. So, untuk mengambil kira Accord-Accord tersebut, so the engineering act has to be changed. One of the main changes that took place was actually the citizenship requirement. Okay, so anyone can come in here, uh, the mobility of engineers enhanced. 
Okey, so itulah dia. Ada ada beberapa benda yang lain. Uh, contohnya uh, the requirement for CPD and all that. Some of these things kita keluarkan. So we we we, we, we in a way we liberalise lah. Ha? Jadi so, benda-benda ni kita tak perlu lah lihat hari ini. Uh, but more focus is how to get it first. Once you get it, other things you can do. Alright. Now, I I cut short a lot of things. Okay. Now, kalau dulu there is only two two sebelum 2015. There's only a graduate engineer and a professional engineer. So like 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 us like me. I was a graduate engineer, registered. And then I said for exam, I became a professional engineer, only one level. Okay. So now after 2015, we added basically three more criteria. Okay. Now what are the criteria? Professional engineer with practicing certificate. It means now after 2015, July 31st, anyone who becomes PE, they will only become PE. They don't become PEPC. To become a PEPC, you sit to have to sit for examination. Okay, so this is also um, not to say that you have a lower tier and a higher tier, tapi to differentiate. Macam kita lecturers, we don't do businesses, we don't do consultancy. PE is good enough, and you can do many things with PE. Tapi PEPC ni uh, a little bit more higher. You can uh, you can actually uh, submit your drawings. You can submit. Uh, you can be a submitting person. Let's say DOE requires a drawing, you can submit on your on behalf of your company. Yeah, of course, PE also can submit if it is his own in invention, if it is his own company. Other than that, you cannot submit. It is such. Then you have also a technician, uh, inspector of work, which I think I don't think we are interested today. And we also have engineering technologies, uh, e tech. Huh? Some program, I think UTHM ada ITEC program tak? Ada ada technologies program tak? Tak ada. We have a technologies program uh, in Faculty of Technology uh, Engineering. Engineering kan? Ah, uh, okay, you have. So you you go into uh, different. So they can come and register as a technologist. They are part part there. Later, uh, board is thinking now engineering technologies. We meet certain qualification. You may even become a professional engineer. They are the part there. Tapi belum dilaksanakan lagi, but that was the idea then, okay? So let's say five years you have done this and that. So there is a there is a cross uh, bridge here uh, later, but but now we have started this. So there are lima mainly, okay? All right. <clears throat> now what are the difference? Actually, PE and PE tak tak banyak different. Tapi cuma yang yang biru sebelah kanan ni. You can do businesses. You can form businesses. So for for PE, PE can become a stakeholder, but to become a director, you have to be a PPC. Okay, and if you have done job, you can recover a, a fees in the in the in the in the court. Submit plans, make evaluation of structure, use PP stand. So it means you do a little bit more extra. Okay, why? Because PPC PE is a you have not gone through certain training. PPC they have gone through a bit more training, a bit more assessment. So that's not much different as far as lecturers are concerned. So let's focus ourselves with PE first. PPC can come later. Now, so now we come to our subject matter today. Anything so far? Na 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 tahu ke? Prof, you can you can uh, briefly explain lah. Okay, uh, right. So now you are a lecturer. Okay, many of you all are registered as a GE. Ramai yang dah GE kan? Graduate engineer. The number is increasing lah, Prof. Graduate engineer. Apa kau graduate engineer? Not PE ya? Eh? Maksudnya you have a recognized engineering degree. Yes. Okay. So if you are registered with board for more than three years, then you have a case today for us to discuss. Okay? All right? Now, have satisfied training requirements set by the board. I will go details later, but what it is is the requirement is three years. 
okay two years is general training in engineering now as i mentioned earlier uh, teaching engineering subjects are engineering services therefore the two years can come from your teaching let's say lah prof waiza uh, yani dah mengajar 10 tahun macam 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 dah okay engineering lah dah jadi dekan jadi timbalan dekan gini gitu gitu all that accounted okay so you just need a letter from your dean or whatever dengan ini saya mengesahkan bahawa adalah komit dia pak iza telah menjalankan aktiviti sebagai kerja beliau termasuk research blah 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 sebagainya dah you need the two years now one more year that one more additional year is what most of us struggle betul now one more year what requirement is practical training yeah okay now that practical training definition dia sangat-sangat berbeza bagi setiap orang so today i'm going to really define for you what it means what it means okay in the later slide so let's talk about that later now sekarang ni dia ada tiga route now which route kita akan design later setelah kita habis hujung eh now dia ada route a route a ni directly apply dengan bot yes okay, okay. directly apply dengan bot, bot ni sebenarnya tak ada orang juga orangnya sama juga <laughs> Jadi sekarang board ni dia akan lantik kita outsource the training the the interview siapa kepada siapa kita outsource kita outsource kepada myset okay kita outsource kepada IEM IEM pun outsource juga dia menjalankan interview bagi pihak board group A sebenarnya yes. dengan syarat-syarat yang kita letakkan yes okay? Nah, kita juga sekarang ni kita maksudnya BM juga tengah melihat menambahkan seorang lagi ACEM untuk menjalankan uh, interview tersebut. Okay, in the future we may also appoint ICME, IET untuk menjalankan interview tersebut. Ya, yeah? ke arah itu. Dan saya sendiri uh, terlibat dalam proses uh, mengaudit this uh, this uh, service providers. Okay, I was in IEM untuk mengaudit bagaimana mereka menjalankan interview kepada group A. Kita juga berbincang dengan uh, uh, apa mereka-mereka yang telah melalui interview tersebut. Hmm. Group A. Okay, dah right. Nanti kita, I, I have a slide after this. Okay. Nah, group B ini adalah mereka-mereka yang dah ada chartered engineer. Okay. Hmm. Uh, contoh uh, IET, for example. You all ada IET kan? Electrical. Yes. yes. Apa lagi? untuk electrical chartered engineer. Contohnya Australia engineer, engineer Australia ada <laughs> boleh juga. Hmm. So you have a professional qualification from outside body di mana kerana kita ada mutual recognition then you boleh gunakan that mutual recognition untuk apply dengan board, a hey board I dah ada, I am a GE. Saya ada tiga tahun industrial training dah. Ini contohnya kan ini. Dan on top of that, saya ada juga uh, chartered engineer daripada IT. Boleh tak you bagi IR? Boleh, boleh. Nah, okay, you do this, then you get it. That's group B. Yeah? Ramai juga sekarang ni, last month, 40 orang apply. 47 orang apply group B. Yeah? Group B. Ramai. Popular juga, rule A pun popular juga. Ada juga rule C. Rule C ni apa? Rule C ni, two in one. Maksudnya, you apply to IEM, you jadi corporate member of IEM, dah ada corporate member, ketuk pintu BM, BM, saya ada GE, saya dah register 10 tahun, I ada training 4 tahun dah. Lepas tu, I am a corporate member of IEM. Can you give me... Uh, I, I don't know, okay, 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 okay. You, you give me this, I give you, macam tu Jadi kita ada tiga rule Three rules Okay Rule B is very simple, rule B is very straightforward Understanding, rule C Today, after this lecture We we'll take a break And I will go through the rule A punya ni yeah? Rule B ni pun Saya akan bagi tahu juga sikit pada ni yeah? Now, then apply 
So you have root A, kalau dulunya dipanggil 1, 2, 3, tapi sebenarnya A, B, C. Because dalam akta kita, dia adalah 10 A, 10 B, 10 C. Jadi A, B, C. Pasal itu dinamakan A, B, C. Pasal ini adalah dia punya huruf yang digunakan dalam akta. So root A, B, A. Dan ketiga-tiga ini diterima. Dan last year, ramai juga yang root A, ramai juga yang root B. Ramai. Root C, ramai juga. Jadi tiga-tiga ni. So you have three rules now. Bergantung kepada apa yang dia ada. Lepas ni kita mungkin at the ujung ni mungkin you can ask me, eh saya sebenarnya dah ada ni. Dah ada ni. Boleh tak saya apply ni? Ha, boleh. Okay. Isu kalau you apply ni, you perlu hadapi ini. Jadi ha, sediakan yang ini. Ha, macam tu. At the ujung ni. Eh. Hmm. Alright. Now, saya bagi detail sikit. Rule A. Okay. Faizah ada recognize degree dah. Dah Lama. register. Dah. dah lama dah. Dah lama. Register as a GE dah. Bila you register? Tak ingat dah pun dah lama dah, Prof. Okay. Tak ingat. Sampai, lama sangat sampai tak ingat. <laughs> Three years of practical training. Okay. Dua tahun dah lama mengajar. Tapi satu tahun tu macam mana kita nak kira. Ha, that's what I'm going to explain to you later. Okay. Kita ambil ni dulu. Ha. Lepas tu, ni yang empat ni. Dia sekarang ni, dia ada kita dah buat uh, Januari this year. Kita dah ada cara baru tau. Dulu cara lama. Kita dah ada outcome base sekarang ni. I will go through. I will go through after this. Slide, ada 40 slide. Very quickly. So this process has become much more simpler. And a direct forward now. That's why now myself, uh, my colleagues, uh, many of them are going around the country. Uh, this is not the only uh, thing we do. We do uh, a lot of webinars for industry. Banyak lah. 20 hari bulan itu pun ada juga. Alright. So, this interview ni, and let's pay attention today. Now, sebenarnya, academics, dia tak, dia tak pay attention sangat. Benda-benda uh, macam ni detail kan? Let's uh, pay attention what is required. So, uh, dengan pemahaman, you, you can actually achieve your PE. I, I tak kata easily lah. It is not rocket science. Dan saya nak ceritakan nanti ni, PE ini sebenarnya it is not. I can show you an example after this, okay? It is not just for accreditation for your program, but you can benefit individually, okay? Benefit individually. Uh, one or two example ni saya tunjukkan kes saya sendiri. Bagaimana uh, saya dapat uh, benefit. Okay, so the benefit come from you uh, being visible. Mm -hmm. Ilmu dia sama je. Ilmu dia sama. Tapi since you have more visibility, number one. Number two, since you have, you are tied by uh, ethical behavior because you are PE. You, you, you sebenarnya terikat dengan behavior ethical. So people can trust you. Okay. Now, Ruby pula seperti yang saya katakan tadi, you dah ada PH ataupun whatever, professional degree, you dah register 3 tahun, you masih kena ada registration ya, 3 tahun. You dah ada 3 tahun experience. Macam tadi. Okay, nombor 4 ni, you kena pass satu small test. Okay, I'm part of the, uh, myself, Dato' Asam Basri, Generally, we, we make these exams. You jawab enam soalan, lulus benda ni. Uh, terus, tak payah interview, nothing. Eh? Because, bila you dapat this degree daripada luar negara, you already interview, tak payah. Tak ada interview pun. Register, you hantar you punya dokumen, you duduk one small one and a half hour test, lulus, terus dapat IR. So, this is rule B. So any of you have chartered engineer, you are you are registered dengan tiga tahun, you are experience, you can go through this. This is also ramai yang dapat. Last year mungkin dalam hundred over yang dapat. So this is rule B. Yeah. Now rule C pula simple. Registered as a graduate engineer dah. Lepas tu you apply jadi corporate member of IEM. Ah process dia dia ada proses di sendiri. Apa apa apa, you dapat. 
Lepas tu, you hantar surat dengan board. Kata, I dah jadi corporate member. Nah, ini saya punya pengalaman 3 tahun. Board will give you. Dia ada... Dia ada. Shorter lah, Prof. Ha? The route more shorter. Uh, shorter in a... Of course, uh, dekat corporate member IEM ni, there, there's a few steps lah. Ya, yeah, ya, yeah, ya. Yeah. A few steps. Because, bila dia dah interview you, maksudnya dia dah test you lah. Mm-hmm. So, you don't have to go through the process. Because I see, that's why I see that IEM has got a special privilege. Kat sini, you dapat dua lah. You dah jadi corporate member IEM. Yeah? Mm-hmm. You also get your IR. Like me, for example, right? Yes, yes. So, so you, you can get that. Okay, I'm a fellow of uh, IEM. So, corporate member, fellow. So, ini adalah pemahamannya. So, so uh, of course, uh, IEM has got their own uh, conditions dan sebagainya. Kan? You go through interview, PI interview. So, you get this. So, you have options now. Three options. Okay? So, kita, cuba kita faham proses dia dulu. Okay? Now, simple. Which one is for you? A, B, C. Jadi, ini, ini, I tak boleh nak katakan ini pendek, ini panjang, ini susah, ini senang. Ini bergantung kepada what level are you now. Okay? What you want to do now. Okay? So, itu adalah the rules yang kita uh, ni. Uh, lepas tu, PCE. PCE, PPC ni data lah. Okay, you do the exam. The PPC ni, PPE ni, what he knows but on what he does not know. So, we are going to check kalau kalau, P, kalau PE ni, what he knows. Then kita tak interested in what he don't know. Tapi, PPC will check you on what you supposed to know. Itu je beza dia. Okay, I, I, I do exams for chemical and environment for PPC also. Okay. And I'm in charge for uh, environment punya area. So, dia adalah betul-betul dia yang kita akan masalah. Kita akan, you know, mark those dan sebagainya. Yeah? So, now, there is also another attraction if you become a PE. See now, uh, our region is growing. Indonesia is growing. Vietnam is growing. So, most of us engineers, most of our engineers will be regional engineers. Kita akan jadi macam European Union. Okay. Now, there is also an Asian level chartered professional engineer, M1. Di mana kalau you, kita ada uh, mutual recognition. So, if you are a PE with certain uh, qualification, experience and uh, sebagainya, you can become a PE Asian. So, it's called ACPE. Now, what is the good thing about this? Mobility, work, consultancy project, movements. Okay, maybe for academics ini tak apa-apa nampak sangat. Tapi if you are if you are engineer, young engineer, registered, you have this. Imagine your mobility. Imagine you can move around in this region. Sekarang ni, you can you can you can daily uh, fly in and out of Vietnam dan balik hari. Pagi ambil flight dua setengah jam sampai sana because one hour difference. Um, you do your work. Tang tu datang balik. Many are doing that. Uh, so, this is what, so dengan adanya PE ni, dia membuka peluang kepada kita untuk um, untuk menjadi regional. So, it's, it's like a license. Okay, if you have a car license, you go to certain country, just go and register yourself, you can drive there. Similar. So, this these movements are taking place. These are the numbers lah yang kita ada. Okay. And uh, what I want to say is go beyond accreditation and promotion. Kalau kita fokus pada IR itu accreditation promotion, yes, you can. But in the long run, you 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 get uh, a lot more this. Yeah. Okay. Um, what do you do? Start applying. So just your route. Application. So now this is my first slide untuk membuka uh, minda kita dan sebagainya. Now uh, let me uh, let me uh, show you. Okay, tak apa. So far kita question answer dulu. Thank you. Any question first? I'm sure there is questions. 
Okay, macam mana nak dapatkan satu tahun punya pengalaman ni? Let me cover that in the next slide. Ya. Yeah. Dengan lebih detail lagi. But so far, any question? Question? Okay. Ada soalan ke? So far no problem. So far tak ada soalan. Uh, eh, ada, ada soalan chat ni ada orang. Okay. Uh, kalau tak ada. Uh, can you still see my uh, screen kan? Yeah, I can see your screen. Okay. Now let me show you. Uh, show you. Uh, okay. Stop share. Let me share other things for you. Huh? Sort of example yang kita boleh. Kita boleh bagi ni kan. Uh, no, this. Uh... Can you see my emails? Yes, I can see. Okay, this is the sort of uh, sort of things that you can get. Okay, now. Okay, you see, good morning. I hope it's a number of years since we corresponded, but I'm contacting you today to pursue a reason for the decision we had uh, related to production biodiesel, blah, blah, blah. So what they want me to do is, you want me to uh, basically uh, EPA, this environmental production agency, uh, where we conduct audit here on, on companies and we provide report to EPA, environmental protection agency, where based on that they will allow these companies to these companies to uh, export oil from here so why they come to us see basically they come to us because they believe as a professional engineer you are ethical enough you are competent enough you are skilled enough to do this job for them so mainly on the ethical part so your visibility increases so what what they do what they do, they look at the registry. Okay, these are the professional engineers. And if you are an academic with a research background, it's even better. So you, you, you are a professional engineer, but at the same time, you, your deep depth of the knowledge in particular area is very good. So you become a very visible, visible target for them to choose you. And furthermore, you are engaged in a university, a reputable university, where you can be expected to behave in a certain uh, honorable manner. So this is where the, the value comes in. Okay, the value comes in. So university may not pay you 500 ringgit mm -hmm. monthly, but some universities already pay. UMS, UMS is one of them. Okay. Eventually everybody will start paying, but what you may get in the long term, probably after 10 years of experience. This is here. See, yesterday, someone from Singapore called me, my friend. He studied with me. He went to Singapore. He's a Singapore citizen now. He's working for a construction company, chemical engineer construction company. So he, he wants, his company wants to develop something in Malaysia now, but he require for him to act here, he require a professional engineer. But he didn't even register himself. So he's calling me, is there any shortcut? I said, sorry, you have to register. So what you do today, will prevent you from, we will give you a lot of advantage probably through three years time personally, not for your organization, not for university, personally. So this is what I want to uh, emphasize uh, today. So, apa aku dapat? Yes, uh, why should I do this? Kenapa? But it's a highest qualification, highest academic qualification is PhD, highest professional qualification probably a PPC. But PE is, is good enough. Uh, itu yang kita nak cerita, which you can, I personally have benefited, um, you know, uh, a lot uh, by being a professional engineer because kita berusaha dengan kita punya colleague, peers, okay, FAS, uh, you know, uh, Genius Association from Singapore will call you, Japan will call you, many, many things. So networking is there as well. 
Okay, I think uh, the first slide is over. Maybe we can take uh, questions. Uh, if no questions, we can take a break for five minutes. Dr. Faiza? Yes, bro. Any 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 other related questions? Anyone? Tak ada berkenaan dengan anything about this uh, this accreditation or whatever. Okay. So far. Yeah. Not yet, bro. Not yet, huh? Okay. So can we take a five minutes break? Okay, can. Uh, so before this, uh, I want to uh, uh, ask everyone to uh, fill the attendance link in our chat box for attendance for this session. Thank you. So Prof asked us to um, take five uh, so we can go anywhere we want to go, either want to the toilet or you want to uh, do something important, so you can do now. Thank you. Assalamualaikum everyone. Welcome, salam, Prof. Uh, okay, um, I'm going to share the next slide. Okay. Okay. Um, stop share. Share screen. Maybe I'm going to call it. Can you all see my slides? Hello. Yes, I can see your slide. Okay. The title is uh, BM Outcome Based on. Okay. Okay. So, uh, BM Outcome Based Professional Assessment. Okay. So, now I'm going to focus on group A. Group B is simple. If you have, what will happen is group B, eh? Kita cakap selalu group B ni, kelas kejap. Eh? Group B ni, let's say you are you are GE, you have a professional qualification, IIT ke, MAC ke tak kisah. Then you have a meet the three years uh, train, industrial uh, attachment upon practical training, you apply. Once you apply, there are orang-orang dia, it will come to few people. Okay, kalau chemical, saya, saya nampak lah. Kalau electrical, ada orang dia. Kalau mechanical, ada orang dia. Jadi, jadi uh, biasanya daripada EIQ punya committee members and they will then confirm that this particular candidate GED okay dua tiga tahun lebih lah practical dia yang setahun tu dia memang dapat yang dua tahun tu ada dan dia punya dia punya chartered engineer ni relevan dengan dia punya field lah jadi bila kita berkata demikian kita akan kata okay atau dan Bob kata, eh, uh, okay, you dah mencapai uh, syarat-syarat untuk B, come and sit for test. Test tu kita buat, satu setengah jam, lulus, then you become a professional engineer. Group B. Group A ni uh, direct to the board. Nah, ini yang kita nak cerita hari ini, yang outcome based ni. Yeah? Are we okay? Uh, clear? Pizza? Okay now, there are, uh, there are five parts today. I'm, I'm going to go quickly because uh, this information will be made available to you. You will hang on. Okay, now, Nuri Eni, uh, usually professional engineer, direct apply dengan board. Okay. So here, kita akan pastikan you, sekarang ni dia menjadi outcome based tau. Kenapa dia outcome based? You will see later. Okay. Now, outcome-based method, 
Kerana dekat luar negara ramai dah pergi outcome based. Okey, apa beza outcome based ni? Katakan apa Iza sekarang ni nak apply. Pak Iza kata aku dah kerja kat sini 3 tahun. Kita kata tak desa. 3 tahun ke, 30 tahun ke, 35 tahun ke tak desa. I'm more interested in what you need. Okey. Setahun pun tak apa. Tapi what if what you need is what we are interested on. 30 tahun pun if you want it is not good. You are not good lah. Ha, itu, itu maksudnya. Dengan cara ni lagi mudah. Okay. Now. Dia macam ni. Practical experience ini. Ini yang banyak akademik tak dapat. Regulation 90, 990. 22 mengatakan bahawa. Seorang GE perlu ada 3 tahun training. Di mana salah satu daripada setahun tersebut mestilah practical training di Malaysia. Ini yang ramai sangkut. Dalam disiplin tersebut. Kalau electrical, electrical lah. Kalau kimia, kimia lah. Jangan buat benda lain. Setahun. Nah ini yang ramai tak dapat. Bukan tak dapat, tak memahami dan tak menghayati apa yang diperlukan. Kita akademik ni Biasanya kita terkongkong dalam kita punya kongkongan mengajar, research. Kita punya mulut keluar tu je research. Aku dah buat research. Aku dah menghasilkan 10 orang, 20 orang. Itu je kita punya bercakap. Tapi, kita keluar sikit. Dan kita kena keluar sikit. Kerana we are not talking about PhD here. We are not talking about YWA. We are talking about professional. Benda yang sama, tapi macam mana kita menzahirkan idea tersebut tu penting. Ya? Yeah? Now, the next one is Now, for candidate who are engaged in research with you They must have at least one year industrial experience Such experience shall be obtained in the field of engineering practice other than research and teaching And under supervision of a registrar Nah, ini yang Kita punya kelit, kelit akademik tak dapat ni Now, how you can get it Nah, ini yang saya nak ceritakan hari ni Ya Ceritakan hari ini, so that you know what we are going to talk about. Ya. Yeah? Now, dulu sebelum ini kita perlukan kalau civil engineer ini 12 bulan dekat design, 12 bulan dekat site. Oh, kalau elektrik kan uh, kurang sekian, lah. 12 enam. Elektronik kalau ini tak ada gagal, gagal. Now anda Outcome based ni, you tidak time based lagi. Apa yang 6 bulan, 6 bulan kat situ. As long as you have one year industrial training, dan you boleh buktikan apa yang dia dapat cukup. Jadi, keperluan ini telah dikeluarkan. Jadi, tak payahlah someone do 6 bulan kat sana, kat sana. Kalau dulu ini tak ada, memang gagal betul. So, this is no more. This requirement is no more, but one year practical training that you must be perlukan. Macam mana bentuknya kita boleh ceritakan. So this minimum requirement is no more. Out. Okay. Now, macam mana cara kita buat dengan cara baru? Now we talk about competence. Apa competence yang diperlukan? Okay. Saya akan tunjukkan lepas ini. Ini semua yang boleh baca. Jadi kita akan melihat kepada empat area, lima area. Dan elemen, 18 elemen. Nah, jangan takutlah. Kita tengok punya, apa punya. Ya, dia ada. Jadi, instead of yang yang ni, sekarang ni kita kita ada ni root A, ya. ada 5 area. Okay, apa dia? Area-nya knowledge and understanding of engineering. Kepahaman dan ilmu dalam engineering. Kita kan dah ada PhD. Knowledge and understanding ni comes Very easily. Now, B ini susah sikit. Yang satu tahun tu. Practical application. Nah, dua tahun tu dapat. Nah, ini, 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 ini yang kita perlukan. B. C ni responsible. You do curriculum review. You jadi coordinator. You jadi you jadi ketua lab. You, you itu banyak kat sini. Communication interpersonal skill. Berlambat-lambat. Kita buat conference. Macam-macam. Nah, professional commitment ni kita buat latihan. Macam sini. Jadi A, C, D, E, kolektor kira 
boleh tinggi lah dapat markah. Cuma yang kita perlu buat adalah D. Ya? D. So this is D is what we are talking about. So kita tengok kemudian. Right? A. Dia si A ni identity animal. Broadening personal knowledge. Technical skill. Dia boleh tulis ni. Macam-macam boleh tulis. Lecture pergi workshop sana, workshop sini. Cara mengajar, cara... Macam broadening personal. Dia ada contoh-contohnya tau. Dia ada barang dia. Contoh-contohnya diberikan. Kita boleh berikan ke dia. Relevant engineering code. Macam mana kita gunakan code dalam pengajaran kita. Dalam electrical kita. Kalau dalam lab kita. Macam mana? Ha, ini tulis sikit. Sikit dia tulis ni kemudian. Jadi dia ada tiga area. Jadi tak perlu buat laporan macam dulu. Technical report. Tapi cuma isi borang. Mengenai perkara-perkara ini. Eh. Abi ni pun, Abi ni dia mesti datangnya dari kita punya industrial training, industrial uh, attachment dan sebagainya. Conducting reviewing projects or requirement, conducting appropriate research. Okey, kat sini ni biasa ni kalau dulu kita memerlukan satu tahun attachment. Okay, dia ada lima perkara saya nak nyatakan di sini. Satu tahun tu bukan terus satu tahun untuk accumulative. Dua bulan, campur tiga bulan, campur enam bulan, campur lima bulan. Nah, dia tidak semestinya berlaku sebagai attachment. Dengan ini, saya telah di-attach dengan syarikat sekian-sekian untuk satu tahun. Tidak perlu. Asalkan ada surat mengatakan bahawa berlaku satu proses di mana kita, Pak Izzah contohnya, telah menggunakan teori-teori engineering, asas-asas engineering untuk menyelesaikan satu masalah industri ialah telah menggunakan apa ni teori-teori dan sebagainya untuk menambah nilai kepada kualiti orang jalan Pak Izah telah menjalankan projek dengan menggunakan asas-asas kejurutan elektrik untuk membuat SOP yang lebih selamat Jalan. Ya. Telah mengoptimalkan proses dia orang. Telah menjadikan produk dia orang boleh tahan lama. Dan projek tersebut tidak sah mestinya berlaku di dalam syarikat kerana kita dah keluarkan dah slide requirement. Walaupun dia ini berlaku di makmal, yo yo makmal, jangan panggil benda itu sebagai research. Praktikal benda tu berlaku dengan syarikat menyelesaikan di mana ia yang berlaku, bagaimana ia yang berlaku pada pada dan menulisnya. Tapi kalau kita zahirkan semua benda ni sebagai research project, maka jatuh dalam perkara dua tahun itu. Ya? Jadi apa yang kita perlukan? Okey, katakanlah Mama Rushidi ataupun Izam ada kolaborasi dengan syarikat tersebut dua bulan. Kolaborasinya adalah tahun dua bulan. Isunya adalah untuk uh, untuk uh, menyelesaikan masalah tripping yang sering berlaku kerana penggunaan kerana dia punya dia punya pasal tu tak di diseimbangkan dengan baik ataupun penggunaan elektrisiti sangat tinggi. Jadi bersudi dengan Nizam ni pergi ke perpisah mereka tersebut membuat audit cara membuat audit. Ah ini caranya. Ah ini 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 design. Uh, netbook yang kita beli buat electrical uh, ni dengan cara ini dia boleh mengurangkan penggunaan dan tripping boleh rendah. Jadi ke mana perginya? Uh, ke mana, macam mana dia ini boleh di, di, dinyatakan sebagai praktikal? Kerana dia menggunakan teori, menggunakan design konsep, menggunakan investigation dan sebagainya. It is not research. You are actually. Ya yeah, memang pada zahirnya pemahamannya adalah satu research lah. Tapi research itu satu tool yang digunakan untuk menyelesaikan masalah industri. So, so you ada surat daripada syarikat tersebut. Katalah syarikat kita berjaya. Tak apa. Dapatkan seorang yang kita kenali, bagi dia confirm. Dengan ini, apa surat yang diberikan oleh syarikat. So, macam contoh, for example. Kawan uh, dekat jabatan saya, dia dia, dia buat projek ini enam bulan. Kak syarikat itu tak ada engineer, tapi engineer itu memberikan surat. Atas surat itu, saya cop. Saya kata saya mengesahkan bahawa apa yang ditulis oleh syarikat adalah benar. Dan staff tersebut telah menjalankan latihan tersebut. Jadi inilah caranya. 
Jadi ikan kau, okey yang paling cantiknya attachment 6 bulan plus 6 bulan penuh masa. Tapi walaupun attachment you kena masih lagi menulis apa yang dibuat. How come? Tapi katakan attachment tak ada tapi you buat some project, short term project. Kumpul lah 2 tahun, 2 bulan, 2 bulan, 3 bulan dan sebagainya. Projek apa? Ha, seperti yang saya katakan tadi. Ya penyelesaian masalah, penambahbaikan produk, safety, maintenance. Ha, sekarang ni duduk pergi situ. Kita punya syarikat ni selalu sama. Breakdown. Boleh tak you, you datang kaji kita punya sistem ni. You nasihatkan kita bagaimana kita boleh buat uh, maintenance secara berkala. So that kita punya breakdown rendah. Boleh tak? You buat lah. Projek. Macam mana kita nak kurangkan penggunaan uh, elektrik? Projek. Benda-benda macam ini kalau ditulis dalam letterhead syarikat tersebut dan di pengesahan that you can can do it. So kalau kita lihat benda tu problem sah nampak macam tadi saya kata nampak problem syarikat opportunity engineering teknik. Okey mungkin cara penggunaan teknik dia salah. Grounding dia salah, selalu trip. Kita betulkan. Kita find out what is the problem. Mungkin dia punya termination tak betul. Conducting appropriate research investigation. Ha. Huh? Kita buat investigation bukan investigation untuk menghasilkan publication. Research ni adalah investigation Kita buat dalam makmal kita atau makmal dia Jadi ini semua adalah sesuatu yang kita boleh tulis Jadi sekarang ni kita pergi, kita berurusan dengan syarikat Bila kita berurusan dengan syarikat, minta dokumen Minta sesuatu, tak payah-payah pun tak pun Bagi saya peluang untuk menyelesaikan masalah dia Yang itu boleh digunakan Tak semestinya, konsultasi pun boleh You terima duit, itu buat lain Tapi, dia menyelesaikan masalah dia Tak pakai surat dan sebagainya. Jadi, lecturer kalau kita sedikit uh, mempunyai creativity skill dengan menipu. Tapi kalau ada creativity, this one yeah, is not simple, very difficult. Yang paling cantik, as I said, attachment. Tapi bukan semua boleh pergi attachment. Ya? Yeah? Uh, masa masa sebaik mungkin berlah. Tapi dalam keadaan biasa pun boleh berlaku sebagai itu. Jadi, B ini C, projek. Ah, ini engineering job task. Ini kita boleh gunakan contoh-contoh di jabatan kita sendiri. Ataupun you ada you punya funding. Dapat 2 juta. Ataupun dapat 200 ribu daripada FRGS. Ah, ni managing budget ni. Leading team ni. You you are the, you are the, you are the captain of your lab. Go on lah. Promoting and bringing about continuous improvement. Ah, tulis. D. Communicate national language. Ah, boleh. Pre presenting and discussing. Lama kita buat. Demonstrating personal social awareness of diversity. Ceritalah apa, bagaimana kita berusaha dengan syarikat, berusaha dengan ni, menggunakan kita berusaha dengan ramai orang ataupun you buat student project di mana di situ terdapat. So all that can be written. Yeah. Now E. E ini adalah Dulu kita bagi tes, ya, kita bagi tes etikal. Sekarang tak perlu tes. You duduk, kita bagi satu setengah jam. Setiap komponen ni, you reflect you punya kerja sendiri. Okay, aku ni, saya ni sebagai seorang lecturer. Okay, macam mana saya buat kod? Apa kod yang saya gunakan? Okay, apa bila saya mengajar ni, saya okay. Etik ni, ah, etik ni macam mana? Jadi kita semasa makin Okay, semasa buat evaluation tender ke apa ke, ah, ini ketik. Ataupun dilantik sebagai jawatan kuasa. Uh, investigation, ah, macam mana you gunakan? Sip. Boleh. Anda take engineer in a way that contributes to sustainable. Okay, saya bukan saja seorang ini, tapi saya sangat mementingkan sustainability. Di mana contohnya? Ha, CPD, maksudnya, okay, saya sering uh, menghadiri webinar contoh hari ini. Webinar pun termasuk dalam CPD juga legal matters jadi dalam ni macam mana jadi kita bila kita menulis tulis semua kan banyak 500 hingga 600 kataan saja tu semua ni jadi bila kita tulis macam tu then we see that you can reflect on your work jadi benda tu kita terima so dia ada lima kompetensi A, B, C, D ni you submit 
kita akan buat satu interview untuk memastikan apa yang ditulis tu betul. Dan ini tadi interview tapi you tulis reflection masa you kita panggil you. Ya. Yeah? Dan you kena masa interview tu provide lah evidence yang dalam menipu kan. Kita pakai evidence. Dan ini dia punya cara-cara yang kita adalah. Ya. Yeah? Jadi you kena pass area A, B, C, D, N, E semua ada 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 di punya rubrik rubriknya and rubrik dia adalah sebegini dia ada lima level ya yeah? level dia adalah no evidence you tu boleh ni tak ada evidence langsung oh dah buat ni tak ada reason kalau minta you pun tak boleh nak bagi evidence eh you kata you buat projek 5 juta ni ke mana dapatnya oh, oh, oh. Eh, sebenarnya 5 juta ni bukan saya 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 sebagai ah adalah little evidence adequate evidence satisfactory level of evidence jadi kita nak Uh, antara dua tiga lah good level of evidence jadi bagi academics sebenarnya boleh B A, C, D tak ada masalah ini how you write B ini how you relate ya yeah. ya yeah. the moving one level to next level depending on the competence required not on the length of time oh saya dah buat benda ni sepuluh tahun tak it's what you do outcome ya yeah. the focus is on competence Yeah. For each competence, one or three shows have to do awarded. Typically, examiners have to circle only one. Jadi, examiner akan mark lah. So, application document dia simple. Carrier is three. Very, uh, dia ada borang dia. Lapiran dua dia adalah declaration dia. And dia ada template, isi template. Jadi, ini adalah template-template. Ini adalah kalau you nak, you nak kita tengok, boleh tengok lah. Kita dah ubah dah. So, make it very easy. Kalau dulu kena buat laporan untuk buat diri. No, you don't have to do laporan. Just fill the forms, yeah. Okay, jadi ya. Jadi role ni, you kena sebut dalam orang tu dia akan ada. You ni participate saja ke, contribute ke, leading role. You self, orang tu self. Saya buat ini, saya adalah leading role, tapi saya contribute role. Boleh, tak apa. Participating, tak apa. Dalam interview kita akan pastikan. Nothing wrong with participation role. Tapi tak kata kami lah semua participating adalah leading role yang dibuat. Dan kita akan pastikan apa yang ditulis ni dalam interview besok. Okay, memang betul. So, ini adalah orang-orangnya yang ada. Okay. Okay. Applicants and you write around 350 for each competence element on their own unique experience. Tak banyak. 300 boleh 500 saja. A1, 500, 300. A2, 300. A3, 300. Dah. Bukannya laporan panjang-panjang kan kita pun tak punya panjang. Yeah. Jadi, eh, so we, we give you what to write. Uh, adalah, uh, be here. So, ini semua, uh, you, 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 you all can, can read lah. Assessment process ni simple. Part A, assessment. A, B, C, D. Part A, B ni assessment, technical presentation. Technical, okay. Kalau you gagal technical uh, interview, kita masih lagi boleh uh, go ahead, we give you an essay. We ask you to say, okay, kadang-kadang semua orang tak, tak pandai nak cakap, kita bagi essay. Jadi kalau dulu essay, consider you lulus lah. Dan uh, part E, normally reflection ni orang tak gagal lah. Jadi you gagal part A, B, C, D, satisfactory. Interview, 15 minit. Ini lulus. Kalau tak lulus, kita bagi technical essay. Okey, lulus pula technical essay. Part 2 ni, conduct bagian E ini, you lulus. That's done. So, bila dah habis ni, so you you you, you get what you want. Follow, interview ni simple je. Introduction, we introduce you to. 15 minit presentation by the candidate. Dia ada di punya, di punya kainan. We interview you 45 minutes. Now we, we specify time. Tak ada lah berjelur-jelur dua jam. Final evidence conclusion. So this is what we teach the examiners to do. Nah, ini international punya ni dia, dia, bagi, dia buat macam ni. So not more than one hour. Lebih kurang. Lepas tu, you buat your bagian E. That's it. Adalah ini, ini semua you, 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 you can read. Okay. I think basically macam itulah. Jadi root 
any has been simplified. No requirement for design period six months, maybe small. All lecturers A, C, D, E, I foresee no problem because I'm also a lecturer. B, if you understand what is being asked, if you can relate your theory into what you've done practically, you can do. Tidak wajib untuk satu tahun, attachment directly, tapi boleh buat accumulative one year. And it can take another form, collaboration. And it is not necessarily happen in the practical effect. Itu bagus lah. Tapi, you can. Jadi, bila belum lesen, jangan kata research. You are solving problem. So, dalam solving problem tu, you can ada some studies yang yang memerlukan uh, some system uh, testing in the laboratory. Tak apa. Testing tu, part of the investigation, not research. You're not doing research for publication. You're doing research to solve a problem. You do simulation. It is not research, but simulation for a reason to solve a problem, to develop a, a, a product for the company. Uh, begitu. Jadi, that's why your mentor is very important. Apakah mentor yang baik? Penulisan yang berhemah, yang kena pada tempatnya, jangan dikompongi oleh uh, konsep research dan teaching all the time, talk the right word, right understanding, insyaAllah saya rasa tak rasa untuk akademik untuk mendapatkan B. I think, I hope uh, that that sort of quickly covers uh, our, our need. Jadi kita go through uh, questions. I can summarize it, the whole thing that happened this morning. Okay, okay. Prof. Yeah. Okay, I'm Prof. We have one question from Dr. Moos yeah. uh, in the chat box. Uh, I will read the question for you. I have a question. Is it recommended to apply PEPC be first before apply to ACPE? Um, you can do it same time. Yes, Prof. You can do it same time if you qualify. Oh, okay, we can do, do it same time now. Between PEPC and ACPE. Yeah. Because the, you see, PPC is within the country, okay? Mm -hmm. But ACPE it gives you a different uh, different uh, reach, different visibility in the regional. Mm -hmm. So you can, you can, you can do it both. Okay. So any question from the floors? about the process actually prof uh, i did the process when you when you explain to us i still remember the process i i did before lah saya melalui proses tersebut lah uh, dan dan masa tu uh, <laughs> saya dah isi borang lama prof okey tak apa ah uh, dan kemudian sampai ke office uh, IEM dia bagi tahu uh, borang dah bertukar <laughs> Oh, so, you do, you do PAE kan? Yes. So, uh, actually the question, uh, the answer for the question is quite tough jugalah. Uh, kalau kita kena nak buat ayat kan, kadang-kadang kita pandai bercakap. Tapi we, uh, we, when we write the technical statement lah. Because the all the answer in that form is a technical statement. Uh, pasal tu dalam form 5 pun ringkaskan karangan bukannya mengembangkan <laughs> yes yes i agree so, sometimes uh, what limitation that's why you come in and uh, you got to really sit down and, and uh, dapat bantuan daripada mentor mentor kan uh, don't just uh, simply send with a grammatical error kan kadang-kadang uh, kita tanya oh orang menulis i uh, actually Supervise more than 100 students. Itu je statement dia. Kan? <laughs> dengan, dengan dia, uh, supervise 100 students ini sangat hebat. No, it's not, it's not that. Kan? Betul? Yeah. So, um, because we are looking at uh, technical ability. See, someone who supervise 100 students, can that person go and design a bridge? Not necessarily so. Mm -hmm. Okay, kan? Can he design uh, something safe? Not necessarily so, kan? Yes. Tell how yeah. we can then do a safe design. That's what we are interested in. 
Kan, betul tak? Yes, yes, yes. Your CV is good. Okay, thank you very much. Very impressive. But we are not looking at your ability to supervise. Okay, that's yes. general okay lah. Management of resources, one of the elements. Oh. But we are not looking at, technically we are looking at whether you are able to translate your engineering knowledge, engineering theory into solution, a practical solution, an engineering yes, yes. Yeah, kita buat. Jadi, you punya statement tu kena lagi tu. Yes, yes. The technical statement, the engineering for us lah. Oh, oh, my edge index is 75, contoh. I have uh, a publication, bagus lah. Terima kasih. You are a good academic. But we are not assessing whether you are a good academic or not. We are assessing whether you can become a responsible, honorable, ethical, and a legally a good engineer or not, who can actually translate um, your engineering need to the practicals. So, yes. building solution, providing safer environment. Nah, itu yang kita perlukan. Jadi, jangan kita lupa benda itu. Yes. Kadang-kadang, uh, I see a lot of writing from academics. Sorry to say. Kita kadang-kadang sebenarnya tak nampak benda itu. Kita dah biasa. Bila kita tulis CV. Kita biasa cerita pasal kita dah mengajar 20 subjek dan sebagainya. <laughs> That's the challenge to us lah, Prof. Because yeah. sometimes uh, we as an engineer or lecturer in uh, engineering faculty, kita buat tapi kita tak tulis. So that is challenge for us lah. Jadi yeah. choose the right word. Jangan menipu. But we don't have to over exaggerate certain things lah. Dan orang tak melihat apa yang kita lihat. Hmm. Betul. Jadi apa yes. ni bersama akademi? Perkataan kita lain, kita punya terma-terma dia lain, kan? But now you are being assessed as an engineer by probably uh, people from the industry who is looking for that that particular uh, characteristics and competency and skill. Itu yang diperlukan. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so any question from the floors? Anyone? Okay, if if we don't have any question, can you open your camera so uh, we can uh, snap a, a photo as a memory? Okay, so who will snap the photo, Farina? Okay, we waiting. Uh, Uzli, we snap the photo, okay? All right, okay. Uzli, we snap the photo. So, everyone can open the... Dr. Budiman, snap photo. Dr. Budiman, dia ada tak? Saya punya kerja Zoom. <laughs> okay, so... Kita nak tunggu siapa, eh? Okay, tak apa. Saya pun boleh ambilkan lah. Okay, so everyone open the camera. Ah, bos kita ada. PM Siti Zina Muji, Prof. <laughs> so now she di Putra Jaya eh. Kat Siti Z. Okay, so okay. One, two, three. Give me time. Okay, another one. Okay, so thank you so much for everyone who can join this uh, sharing talk. Thank you so much, Prof, for your sharing. I think uh, thank you, Prof. <laughs> you give a lot of uh, tips for us to, uh, especially to answer all the questions in the form of Prof. Because there is our challenge to answer all the questions in the form. This is my experience, lah, Prof. But mm -hmm. I think for for those all my friends or students can get some tips from you. Okay. So thank you so much. And uh, then uh, if we have any problem, we contact you directly, lah. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Prof. <laughs> okay. All right. So everyone, thank you so so much.
And then uh, we will meet you again for the next sharing, uh, other sharing from our uh, committee. Thank you so much. Thank you, Prof. Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum.